Hey, what's up? We're left with that pencil with another Path of Exile video. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Breach. We're going to cover the whole league mechanic. We're going to talk about how to get it, how to make sure you get the most out of it, and what you can expect to get in the long term with some of the higher tier Breach scenarios. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the easiest way to get Breach in your map is obviously a Scarab, and the Rusted Scarabs are very cheap most leagues i think these are currently going for around half a chaos yeah they're really really cheap for an exalt you can get 300 ish 300 of these so it's very very easy to get just one additional breach in your maps it adds a bunch of monsters especially if you got some of the atlas passive nodes allocated that we'll talk about later uh, we've got the polished breach scarabs get you two additional breaches and the gilded scarabs get you three the winged which i don't have any of they get five additional breaches, so you can get a absolute truck ton of monsters into your map using this. Now we're in the Sentinel League at the moment, and on our map device here, we've got Breach. I think this costs two Chaos if you're going to run it, and it just gives you one additional Breach. Obviously, you can get extra Breaches as well if you're lucky. Just a quick note on compasses as well. There are a few compasses we can use for forcing a Breach in our maps. Obviously, there is your maps contain Breaches, charged compass and you get one additional breach from this along with something like a gilded breach scarab that brings up to four total and then a bunch extra from all of the probabilities of getting it on the map device then you can get the craft on the map device as well and then also there's a charge compass which means you can force a specific breach lord so there's one of these for each you know zoff one for ash one for tall one for ulnatol and obviously for choyula and this means that you can get three additional clasped hands per uh, for each map, uh, for each breach rather, and all the breaches will belong to Chayola, which means you can get a bunch of extra splinters. Chayola will turn up a lot more as well, and this means you can force a lot of Chayola splinters to drop. And obviously there are a bunch of Atlas passive nodes. Let's take a look. So obviously the first one you want to make sure if you want to get breach naturally in your maps, you want to make sure that dimensional barrier is not allocated. This is just to give you that extra chance to get it. Over here, there are four breach wheels on the tree. The first one down here gives you a plus 4% chance to contain breaches in your maps. That's a pretty good one. And then this is on the call of Zeshul which is basically a sort of amalgamation of all of the Breach Lord's names. So there's Zoff, Esh, Tull, Ulnatol, and Chayula in there. It just gives you a 2% chance to contain Zeshultala, the open hand, which is a sort of amalgamation Breach Lord, and then uh, a 20% chance to contain a hand of Zeshultala, which that hand will drop splinters of all different varieties so it can drop Chayula, it can drop Ulnatol, it can drop Zoff or Esh, whatever. Then over here we've got the Gatekeepers Notable which gives you an increased chance to contain a boss so if you didn't know during the Breach encounter when you open a Breach the boss of that Breach, the Breach Lord of that Breach can join in and will drop 10 splinters unless you've got another passive node allocated which gives you double which is this one, uh, breach bosses in your maps drop double splinters, so that means 20. So if you get Chayula breaches and Chayula comes along and you kill Chayula, then you get 20 Chayula splinters, which is pretty decent. Then there's these ones here, which give you, uh, this is just an increased chance to have Ulnatol or Esh or Zoff or Tull or Chayula over here as well. Then up here in the top right, we've got Within Their Grasp, which means that when you do kill the breach bosses in their own breaches and also as you can see here increased chance to contain a breach boss but when you do kill a breach boss then there's a possibility that you will drop one of their breach stones so you could even get a pure choyula breach stone by killing choyula is quite unlikely but it's possible and then by far the best node on almost the entire atlas is Flash Breach, so you got 30% increased area of effect for breaches, 30% increased monster density, so there's loads more monsters in there, and they open and close 50% faster. This is the biggest quality of life, and if you're going to do any breach thing, this, I think, is mandatory, unless for some reason you're trying to make sure everything opens very slowly. This is absolutely brilliant, because it just means they 
you can drop into the breach you can drop out and it's very very quick and very efficient and there's some increased magic monsters and uh, breach chances over here as well okay so let's take a look at what it looks like in a map we've got this little hand here we're gonna jump in and a circle is going to start expanding Monsters are going to spawn, we're going to kill those monsters, and they're going to drop a bunch of items. There are going to be breach rings, which we definitely want to collect, we're more on those later. And there are also going to be splinters for the owner, for the breach lord that the breach belongs to. So the breach lords are Tull, Esh, Zoff, Chayula, and Ulnatol. They're going to be small little clasped hands, which we can open and they sometimes have splinters in. And then there's going to be the large hand of, you know, say, uh, Zoff's clasped hand or Esh's clasped hand, that kind of thing. And those are the ones that have a bunch of splinters in. If we get the the one from the map, of the uh, Zesh Ultula, Zesh Tula, that one, then that can just drop all different types of splinters. So let's open it up and see what we get so as you can see the circle starts expanding and probably around now we're going to get our first clasped hand appear and oh, that was a breach ring there and here is a breach lord you can see they have a little uh, icon on the mini map there and it's esh and they dropped their 10 splinters which is nice and then you can see over here we've got zesh ultala's clasped hand that's going to drop uh, all different types of splinters there and then that's it because we've got flash breach on so it's very quick which is high quality of life so we've got these breach rings here we've got all the splinters and just pick all those up and let's talk about the rewards one of the rewards that we're going to get from breach is these breach rings they are all they come corrupted and their properties double whilst you're in a breach so if you've got a lot of stats on there and it's an, and you're using an omni build then it's obviously pretty good but we're not really in breaches that much, just a small fraction of our mapping time. So there is a recipe, a vendor recipe you can do with these breach rings for something called a grasping mail, like this one here. And a grasping mail, it's an armor evasion and energy shield base. So it's strength, intelligence, and dex. And you can get these, if you see here the chaos damage taken does not bypass energy shield whilst not on low life that is Esh's uh, it's an Esh modifier you can't roll these any other way than by submitting all of these you have to do 60 at once to the vendor and then you get a unidentified grasping mail now there is a one that is very very valuable which is the Chayula modifier which is 100% increased global defenses it's very valuable at the moment because we've got recombinators in this league and you can get one of those, fracture it, and then transfer the 100% increase global modifier onto a VAR regalia or some other energy shield base and get really, really crazy energy shield builds. So let's submit ours to the vendor and see what we get. All right, here we go. And there we, if we just take one out, you see we get all these hidden random rings and we put the 60th one in and we get our grasping mail. It is a level 82. I'm fairly certain it's based on the average eye level of all the rings in here. So let's just take that and let's see if we get something good. I think at the moment a grasping mail with 100% increased global defenses is 16 exalts. So let's see what we get. We didn't get it, which is a shame. We got, what was it? We got of tool, so a chill enemy for one second when hit, reducing the action speed by 30%. So that's a shame, but there is no other way. You can't chaos orb these and try to get, you know, an Ash or a Zoff or a Trailer on here at all. It's the only way is to just identify them. So let's take a look at some of the other rewards we're going to get. Okay, we talked about the grasping mail that you can get from your breach rings. There are also these breach stones that you can get as well from all those splinters that you drop. And these breach stones, let's just put our compasses uh, away here. Uh, these breach stones you can put in the map device and it will take you to the domain of that particular breach lord. So if we just uh, chuck in at this Zoff's breach stone, then we're going to get transported to a magical realm where we will kill 
uh, a bunch of it looks exactly the same as it does in a map so there's just a hand we're going to go and boop the hand like boop and then a ring starts expanding and lots of monsters start uh, spawning and you can see at the top there is a countdown and this Zoff breach that we're doing, it's pretty low level, this is at level 70. So these go all the way up to, I believe, level 83, depending on what type of breach law they are and also what type of breach stone that we're using. So at the end of this, at the end of this breach, these take, I believe it's exactly five minutes for each one, or maybe it's just two minutes actually. Then there is a breach boss. So we're gonna go and find Zoff in their domain and I'm just gonna fast forward until that point. Okay, we're getting towards the end of this breach now. And one thing that happens here is all the loot drops all in one place. Look at this, it's just all dropping straight away. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that there's any loot at all as our loot filter is relatively strong. We get some breach rings, which is nice as well. And then we get the arena, and this arena is where we can go and fight Zoff. Let's go and do that right away. So here's Zoff. Uh, it's pretty quick because it was only item level 70, and sometimes they drop blessings. And let's go and take a look at what blessings mean right now. Okay, let's talk about blessings. So they have a couple of uses. The primary one is probably to upgrade stuff that comes from each individual breach lord. So each of the breach lords have, when you kill them at any point, they have uh, a chance to drop their unique items. So this here is a, a, an Esh unique item. Uh, if I just use my trade macro on the blessing of Esh, you can see uh, over here, there is, uh, I can turn Esh's mirror into Esh's visage by using the blessing of Esh on it. I can use the voice of the storm into the choir of the storm and the hand of thought and motion into the hand of wisdom and action. So let's just take a look at what that looks like. You just right click on this and this voice of the storm now becomes this choir of the storm, which is slightly better. Some of them have a lot of use and some of them have less use. Also, we've got these blessings of tool and this is the other thing you can use blessings for so you can uh, right click uh, on this and turn this tool breach stone and you see it's monster level 70 at the moment if we use this then it turns it into a charged breach stone which means that the monster level goes up to 74 and then we can do this to 79 to get it to enriched and also turn it into a pure breach stone with monster level 81 Obviously, the same is possible with Chayula, and the pure Chayula breach stones are level 83. And now, one of the best places to get XP in the game is pure Chayula rotors, a pretty common thing. Uh, apart from Legion 5 ways, they're one of the most used ways to grind either to level 100 or to just get a, a low level character up in a few levels. So, that's what you can largely look forward to getting these breach stones to be used for. Obviously now I've got this pure breach stone, I can use a betrayal flip, I can uh, go into, oh no, uh, not a betrayal flip, I can do a harvest flip where I can turn a, a breach stone into another breach stone so I can hopefully turn my Tull pure breach stone into a pure Chayula breach stone which is 160 instead of the 70 chaos it is right now. Also there are this uh, last slot here in the breach tab for the flawless breach stones. These can be, you know, Chayula, Ulnatol, all the same ones as before. If I had another tool blessing, I wouldn't be able to upgrade this. Flawless breach stones can only come from the hidden maven invitation, which is where you kill all the breach lords. Those are item 84 and obviously they're insane amount of XP. They're... Uh, you can also get them from the feared as well because Chayula is part of the feared. So if you do the feared, then it's possible you Chayula could drop a flawless breach stone too. They sell for a lot. They are, as I said, I level 84 and you get a lot of rewards from them. So that's it for breach and this video. This is going to be another part of the series of videos that 
about league mechanics that I wish I had available to me when I was starting Path of Exile. I hope this is useful to you. If it is, then please chuck us a like or a subscribe on, on this and we'll be able to make many, many more in the future. So with that, I hope you're kind to everyone you meet. I love you all very much and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.